This time on the show, Man in the Middle Attacks Made Easy, Shannon shows us how. Backing up to the cloud, Jason Applebaum joins us to simplify Amazon S3 and cracking the code, network scanning, packet sniffing, and reversing MD5 hashes, plus promiscuous mode Wi-Fi cards, Magic Lantern firmware for the Canon T2i, and a lot more. All that, this time on Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Your next big idea starts at Domain.com. The Thunderbolt by HTC from Verizon, the only phone that can harness the power of 4G LTE. And GoToAssist Express, support smarter with GoToAssist Express. Hello and welcome to Hack 5, my name is Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. And this is of course your weekly dose of Technolus. We have a great show for you guys this week. As what? always, what? I tried this stuff. Oh, you tried the Vegemite? Yes, yeah? I did. Um, and? A very bitter, okay. salty. Um, I didn't like it. Oh. <laughs> I tried to though. I tried yeah. to like it. Is it really is it really that? I like the koala. The koala's nice. Yeah, just take a little it's very bitter, isn't it? Yeah? What do you I think? I just feel like I ate some ocean. Yeah. Ate yeah. some ocean. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't well, know. we did try the Vegemite. Thank you for the Vegemite. Oh, I'm man. gonna keep the koala. Hooray! Um <laughs> Dude, we haven't talked about this. Uh, we need to talk about it again because I'm so, 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 so excited about the party we are having here in the East Bay. It's going to be on April 2nd. Second. April 2nd at the Hati Tati Club here in Albany. Yay! So come out to San Francisco Bay Area. We're going to have dual core and we're going to have Dale Chase. And they're going to be doing some crazy nerd core rapping. Dude, they, do, it's a, be they awesome. do a song together that I absolutely love called uh, WordPress. It's about yes. my favorite CMS and two of my favorite nerd core rappers. You can't go wrong. I down. hope that Dale ah. Chase does Coder Girl. Yes, that's a good one too. Yes. Uh, although that's actually Dual Core's song. So if Dale Chase did that's Coder true. Girl, that would be like mashup horrific. Wait, Coder Girl and yeah. then my girlfriend's a hacker. Oh. Wait, no, see, now I just got those see? mixed up. Yeah. You're right. No, Dale Chase does do Coder Girl. It's my girlfriend's a hacker. That There's lots of girlfriends and coding and hacking going on. It's, it's good stuff. So I think we should probably... Ah. You want some water? Yeah, we should probably <laughs> just get right to it. Shannon started with off with the hacker, hacker headlines. hacker headlines. In a report by the University of California, San Diego, and the University of Washington, scientists have discovered ways to remotely take over your car. Yes, yours. This hasn't happened out in the wild just yet, but they bought a car and they put it through a whole bunch of hacks. Cars nowadays come with cellular connections and Bluetooth technology, so a hacker could potentially remotely take over the locks, brakes, track the vehicle's location, even steal data, etc., etc. Nice. Good. That sounds like fun. That's scary. Check it out. Yeah. Full disk encryption is coming to the internal memory and the secure digital cards of Android devices thanks to WhisperCore, an app from Whisper Systems. Moxie Merlin Spike, or Marlin Spike, co founder and CTO of Whisper Systems, demonstrated the beta of this 256 bit AES encryption system on a Nexus S phone recently. Now, WhisperCore is expected to roll out uh, on other Android devices as well as being free for personal use. There's probably going to be some pricing for corporate use to follow. And you may remember uh, Marlin Spike from such tools as SSL Strip, Google Sharing, and other cloud cracking services like uh, WPA Cracker. It's Ooh. good stuff, man. That guy is so genius. Mm. Brilliant, brilliant guy. Some jailbreaking news. Woohoo! Snowbreeze 2.3 just came out for all of your Apple jailbreaking needs, or at least some of them. This tool will let you jailbreak your iPhone, iPad, or iPod using iOS 4.3 on Windows, but it requires tethering. E Redmond Pi, the creators of, jail, of the jailbreak, say that you can use the ownage tool if you don't feel like using Windows right now, but haven't come out with the untethered version. I love quite that, yet. that you need Windows to hack your iOS. That's great. That's so great. <laughs> Check this out. Twitter has finally jumped on the SSL bandwagon following the footsteps of Facebook, and after the, of course, OMGs, my packets can be sniffed awesomeness that was Fire Sheep. You guys remember that uh, from October? Mm. And now you can use HTTPS to log into the social networking service. In fact, they've even gone as far as to allow you to enable always use SSL so you don't even have to type the S yes. in the HTTP every time. So good on you, Twitter, yes. for making SSL an opt-in feature. Very good. In related news, SSL strip still works. <laughs> hmm. I have some good ideas for hack tips now. Make your friends believe you really are an X-Men, or at least close to one. 
<laughs> yes, the guys at the London Maker Faire 2011 Hackerspace and Bright Arcs used a connect to make Tesla coils react to your every move. And where did they get the idea? The local pub, of course. Hmm. And they called it the Evil Genius Simulator. That's a win for me, and we have a video of it. I invented the Evil Genius Simulator. Oh, the power of electricity! <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, now coming up in a bit, we've got Amazon EC2 programming. We've got the Crack the Code Challenge, how it's completed, uh, as well as an awesome hack tip I'm looking forward to. Me too. But I figured, <laughs> why don't we go ahead and actually check in with Jason for, Jason, awesome. For our first ever season nine road test. When it comes to extending the life of your digital camera, nothing does more than installing a custom ROM. The Magic Lantern firmware for the 5D Mark II and the T2i, right here, has done just that for me. Even though it's still in beta, after four months, it's really proven itself to be a strong tool, tool set. However, it's not for everyone. There are some downsides. Sometimes the camera locks up when you're switching modes and requires the battery to be pulled and the menuing's not perfect and can cause artifacts to remain on the screen and you'd have to restart the camera in order to give it away. However, it does bring a lot of tools to the table that are incredibly useful. It makes up for it with an audio meter, custom safe zones, which you can do edit in Photoshop or your image editor and throw them onto the overlay. You can edit the mic level inputs and you can also record the mic input to one channel while recording the onboard mic to the other so you can have both audio tracks, which is really cool. I do all in all, however, recommend this, but I, like I said, it's not for the, everyone. If you're afraid your camera's gonna freeze up and you know never be able to get it back, you know this may not be for you. But with good news, it did just come out of beta on the 13th of March, so I haven't had a chance to play with it, but I can't wait. The Thunderbolt is the only device powerful enough to harness the power of Verizon 4G LTE. The Thunderbolt is mobile hotspot enabled, which means it provides a wireless hub for up to eight Wi-Fi enabled devices at one time. So multiple users can take advantage of an instant hotspot. Along with having these, the Thunderbolt can give you lightning fast NFL and NHL stats and games, fast streaming movies and TV shows. It has a scorching fast one gigahertz processor, an immense 4.3 inch screen and a kickstand for hands-free entertainment. This Sunday I had the pleasure of hosting the Crack the Code Challenge and really snubs? No. No, no more candy for you. After the segment? If you're good. Okay. All right. Now, a lot of people uh, participated. In fact, an overwhelming amount of people participated in the Crack the Code Challenge this time. And we were really only expecting, like, but anyway, we had like three times more people than we were expecting show Whoa. up. So Paul and I were That's having a just a <laughs> hell of a time getting everybody on. But we're, we're upgrading all the VMs. We're getting more machines. And we're even getting the Thunder Kitten Assault Force involved. So it's going to go <gasps> a lot smoother next time. I'm very excited guys. about that. Yeah, but there was, out of all of the people, only about 20% uh, um, of them actually completed the challenge. So there's a lot of people that were like, how, do you, how do you win it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I figured, why don't we just go ahead and dive right in, figure out how to crack the code, if you will. Show me how to do it. All right, Woo. so it, it, we're just going to be using a lot of uh, packet sniffing and breaking hashes and some older Sweet. protocols like FTP and Telnet and things that are plain text. So we'll be using tools like FTP, Telnet, and Netcat. Mm. Kitties. Yeah, well, speaking of kitties, that's actually one of the files in the zip. You can download uh -huh. the zip over at hack5.org slash ccc13.zip and play along at home. But basically, you get all of these fun tools. You get IP scan and Kirby's Treasure and MD5, Read Netcat, me. Plink, Readme. Yep. And then Windump and PCAP. Okay, so the Readme is just Aww. a picture of the Kirby. To Kirby's. I has lost a key to my treasure chest. One. <laughs> Last I saw it was by, oh, okay. 1073, Forgets where though, can you help me? Of course, Kirby, we'll help you. I remember you that find sofa. Your... So, hey. <laughs> Kirby's treasure is actually a, a true crypt file. We open that up, oh, we're like, oh, hey, okay. let's, let's go ahead and do some of this action. But it's all like, oh, what's the password? It's February. No, it's not February. Oh. <laughs> so, what we need to do is use those clues to figure out. Now, the first thing we're going to do in a the situation where, yeah, well, we've got an IP, so let's port scan it. Okay. Rather than scanning the entire network, since we already know we've got that one host, we want to know 
all of the services that are on it. Maybe we can exploit it, maybe there's some clues. Okay. So let's find out. Now, since we're using Windows machines at the moment for the Crack the Code Challenge, we've got some fun Linux stuff later, but uh, for the moment, we could use Nmap. Mm -hmm. However, I figured, hey, let's make it fun to use a GUI tool. Who doesn't love a GUI tool? So Angry IP Scanner is actually one of the better uh, you know, network scanners that I found for Windows with a GUI. And we're just going to take a look at 10.73, whoops, not 10.255. 31.14. And we're going to come down here, it's kind of hidden, <coughs> to hit down here and check scan ports. Okay. And we're going to give it a port range of, I'm going to say 2 through 2000. Or I guess, you know, if you were, yeah, I'm just Small doing it to save time. Area. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I mean, if you, you were new to this host, maybe you'd do port 1 through 65536 or 65535, whatever it is, okay. all of the ports. But that's going to take a while. In fact, I've gone ahead and actually prepped that turkey so I can minimize this and pull up the other one where I've gone ahead and uh, done the scan. Yay! Yay! The scans are done. And you can see that, yes, the, uh, the host is up, it's green, Le it gets a ping. McLeet. Yeah, the name <laughs> of it is Leedy McLeet. And it does have some open ports here. We see that Sweet. 21, 24, 122, 123, 135, 139, and 443. Those three, 135, 139, 443, that's, that's Windows box, oh, okay. uh, RPC. And Port number 1337. 1337. Of ah. course. So I'm just going to go through these ports in order. I've got my, I'm going to pull that down here, and I've got my command prompt open. And I'm in the zip, and you see that we have quite a few tools, um, one of which being, well, obviously in, F, in Windows we have FTP. So mm -hmm. we know that yeah. port 21 is FTP. So I'm going to FTP over to it 10, 73, 31, 14. What we get is, it says, The princess is in another castle. <gasps> yep, so we're getting close. Now, we actually have some, some numbers here. Those are actually uh, hex codes, yeah, I believe. Yeah, they, they're either hex or decimal or something. Anyway, so. You can plug it in. Here's the thing. A lot of people <laughs> were, were like trying to brute force the login associated with these uh, services. There's yeah. actually no logins associated, so you can't brute force them. Oh. Yeah, well, but. Um, so that's, that's kind of a red herring, but at least we know, you know, if you were actually to reverse those back to ASCII, mm -hmm. you would get another clue. It's, we're going to find the same clue here in a moment. Oh, okay. uh, the next one is port 24. So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to issue netcat 10.73.31.14 and 24. And it says, S listen to listen elite. Listen to elite. Okay. Okay. All right. Elite. Well, I'm just going to keep going through these sequentially. So 1337? 122. Port 22 is typically um, SSH, uh, mm -hmm. so 122 we would assume would be SSH. So I could oh, okay. I could open up Putty or all right. So I'm gonna Putty over to 10.73.31.14 on port 122. And yes, and this is where Log a lot of people get ass. stuck as well. There's no tips yeah. here. It's just a log, and so you're like, all right. Well, I'm just going to keep moving on because I know that you know these Cracked Code challenges are built to be completed in yeah. just a few minutes. Oh, okay. And everything that you need is provided in the zip. Mm -hmm. I just used Putty because it's easier than using Plink sometimes. I don't know. Anyway, so the next one, 123. Now, port 23 is Telnet. So for that, we'll use Plink with TAC Telnet. On port one, two, three, mm -hmm. and it says, An amused kitty is an amused. Keep scanning, tiger. And then, tiny uh, URL. Ooh, it has a kitty. tiny URL. Now, that tiny URL we're going to get to in just a minute, but okay. it, it bounces to hack five and then it bounces somewhere else. And, you know, it, it brings you to a website that will become relevant here okay. in just a moment. So, our next port, uh, one, we're not really concerned with 135. Uh, 139 or 445. Those are typical Windows RPC ports, not mm -hmm. really that interesting. But 1337, it's all saying yes. listen to leet. So let's check it out. So in that case, NC again for 10, 73, 31, 14 on port 1337. Whoa, listening leet. Be very patient. The quieter you become, the more you can hear. Yes, ah. and it says, are you listening? So with that said, we can use Netcat to do two things. We can use it to connect to something else. We yeah. can also use it to listen on a TCP port oh, for okay. just any traffic. So we're going to go ahead 
and change the scheme of your Windows box. We're going to go <laughs> ahead and listen on port 1337. So NC, and then it's basically TAC capital L, TAC lowercase p, 1337. Now if we do that and we're patient. I'll be patient. Kirby meows! <gasps> oh. Okay, so that right there is your next clue. It's actually an MD5 hash. Oh, okay. Now, all of the, that other hex code and that tiny URL, those were both trying to take you to this page right here. The md5.groundweb.com. MD5 There's a, a lot of different places online where you can reverse because these yeah. aren't salted. Yeah. So you basically can just reverse the MD5 sum. Yeah. And if you, uh, if you reverse that, it reverses to? March. Ah, okay, so March that's, is the password. I told you it wasn't That's a February. horrible password. I know, I know it's a horrible <laughs> password, but you know, it's, it's easy to reverse and it's quick. And like I said, you know, these challenges are so that you can just, you know, yeah. hone your skills, play with some packets, you know. Okay. Uh, other people were, were playing with the other things in here. We had like Wind Dump, which is kind of like TCP dump, but for oh, Windows. Oh, okay. And that, um, and you could get it similar ways because basically the whole time that you're looking for this clue, it's being told to you by the server that's broadcasting yeah. you on your port 1337. Okay. So the quieter you become, the more you can hear. And we can go ahead and now put March. And hey, look, there it is. We got a volume. Hey. Oh, yay. And you got the code. And you got the code. <laughs> nice. Don't, don't email me. We, all the winners have already won. But yes. uh, yeah, I that's mean, awesome. still, it's really neat. Anyway. Very cool. Well, thank you, Darren. That is the Crack to Code Challenge for this week. Of course, I really look forward to hearing you guys' feedback on these challenges. We're going to be having a lot more of them, and I've got some really devious thoughts for some future Ooh, ones involving some me. Linux stuff. A little backtrack action. It'll be fun. Yeah, It'll be good. sweet. All right. So we'll be back in just a bit. We're going to be talking to Jason about Amazon EC2 instances and some cool cloud stuff. But first, Shannon, tell me about trivia. Last week's trivia question was, this composer of Blade Runner was an inspiration to the recently released OST by Daft Punk of Tron Legacy. The answer was Vangelis, or Vangelis, not sure how to say that. This week's question is, and I'm an X-Files geek, in season five of X-Files, Esther Name is the creator of what gnarly entertainment software? Answer the question over at hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some sweet Hack5 swag. And now, a word from our sponsor. If you're a sysadmin or a webmaster, you know you need to secure your website. SSL, it's critical. Hey, Twitter just implemented it. And it's used to secure anything from online transactions, email, corporate intranets, social networking. And if you're looking for an SSL or a certificate or even just looking to move your providers, you should totally check out Domain.com. They've got the Thought SSL123 product, which is pretty fantastic because it builds trust. Thought's been around for a long time and is one of the most trusted names in SSL. And it's also all you need to encrypt your site. It's got the you know, highest level of security that you could ever imagine and it's validating you, you know, they can get validation like so quickly. Seriously, we got ours in just a couple hours. It's also really affordable. If you use the coupon code HACK5, you can get an SSL cert for under 40 bucks a year. Seriously, best price on the web for the Thought SSL 123 product. And you got no excuse now not to have SSL on your site. And bottom line, if you need to use SSL, which we all need to, go ahead and check out Domain.com's Thought SSL 123. And thank you very much to Domain.com for hosting Hack5 for over a year now on their awesome virtual private servers. We definitely uh, recommend you go over to Domain.com, get yourself a domain for like 10 bucks a year or, or hosting for like uh, five bucks a month. It's good stuff. Support Hack5 by supporting Domain.com. Get 15% off at checkout with coupon code HAK5. Your next big idea starts at Domain.com. It's the cloud. It's cloudy. There are computers in the cloud now. What does it all mean? Here to explain it to us, of course, Jason. What's up, dude? How you doing? Pretty good. Well, when you say cloud, cloudy, I assume you're talking about cloud computing or cloud storage. So Or daydreaming. Or Fluffy ones. Anyway, so yeah, uh, you, oh, yeah, you're a big fan of this Amazon stuff. I know you've been playing with EC2 yep. instances and well, S3, S3 stuff. S3 what's, is storage. What, what's the difference? I don't. Well, S3 is storage, EC2 is a server. So if you need a server, go EC2. If you need storage, go S3 because you can't run PHP off S3. 
That was a lot of acronyms, but there you go. No, that sounds good. Uh, and I guess the idea is it's Amazon. They're trusted. It's yeah, robust. The well, got it's, it's, it's the, you know, everyone's using S3. So Dropbox uses S3. A bunch of people That's use why storage. Dropbox is so expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Have you Drop seen like Mosey? Or actually, Mosey not Mosey anymore. Mosey uses S3. Yeah, Mosey's dead to me. But um, they backblaze and uh, carbonize. So, yeah, carbon. I don't even know if carbonize. But anyway, the point is it's cheap storage. As a matter of fact, it's so cheap, it's free. Why is it free, you ask? So <laughs> well, Jason, order, is there more? Is there more? <laughs> Tell me more. No, uh, okay, so, so Amazon is in competition with Azure, which is Azure is Microsoft's answer to S3. I anyway, see. so the reason Amazon started a free tier is to you know, get more people in the of course. Okay. camp. Because so camp, what, do we, what do we get for freezies? You get on S3, you get five gigs a month for freezies, plus 20,000 uh, requests. So what is a request? A download or an upload. Oh, okay. So if I do a gigabyte upload, is that one thousand request. requests? Or so that now you have 19,999 okay. 19, requests, requests left. All right. If you do 20,000 requests a month, you are obviously not just using it for backup. Right. Okay. Well, that's great, though, that they offer us basically five gigs it's of backup. Five gigs. For free. Well, so we could be using this. It's the first year, though. So uh, it's going to turn okay. off after the first year. You need a credit card. So they're going to ask you for a credit card. So it's, it's one of those things. It's one of those things. Because gotcha. if you go over, they will charge you. And then there's no warning. It's just like, psh, now you're, you're over. over. All right, cool. Well, hey, you know, five gigs for a lot of sites. Like, I'm thinking this is perfect for, you know, I got my website running yep. the thing. I need the flat files. I need the databases. I need all that stuff. Just in case disaster mm -hmm. hits the fan, we need to, you know, just and pop the stuff back in. Because you can download it just as fast as you can upload it. It's brilliant. Okay. Well, in that case, let's get started. What are we doing today? So it's, it's pretty simple. All we're going to do is we're going to set up a script to automatically sync our server with the cloud. So in case you ever have to get it, get your data back in a hurry, you can have it back really quick. All right. I love this idea. What, uh, so we've got a Linux server here. What kind of dependencies are we looking at? So first thing we need to do, pretty simple, is install Ruby. So it's sudo apt-get install Ruby. Hooray for Debian and apt-get, or you know, Yum, or whatever your favorite distro package manager thingy. Hooray for is. other things. Okay, once that's done, it's pretty straightforward after that. Check the Ruby install. So it's Ruby tack v for, for version. Verbo. Oh, not version, verbose. Not verbose, it is version. We are running Ruby, a version, 1.8 point whatever. Nice. So then once that's done, we need to get the um, S3 Ruby sync files. So these are some the script. scripts. It's the Ruby script that somebody wrote to sync a particular directory or multiple directories. It's a whole huge tool set for managing uh, buckets and all sorts of good stuff. So it's not just like FTP. No. It's like rsync or something. Yeah. Okay. It's so they the got their S3 own thing. It's the S3 version of it. It's, well, the the Amazon has their own APIs mm -hmm. to push bits to them. So it's the S3 version of rsync. There you go. All right. Cool. Well, in that case, uh, let's go ahead and grab yep. that script. I'm assuming we can just F download the HTTP. You can download. You can W get it from an address uh -huh. that happens to be on S3. Oh, S3. It's stored on S3. So you, you <laughs> get this RS3 mm -hmm. sync from S3. It's pretty awesome. Makes sense. Um, all right, cool. So let's go ahead yes. and grab that. So all you do, W get and then the URL, and that will go ahead and get it. And then untar it, so it's tar XYZ delta 49 or whatever it is. X yes, V F X V. ZF. There it is. Unzip, unextract, yeah, yeah, whatever. Whatever order you want and then, it to get into. Yep. Sync.tar, and then you just go ahead and run, run that. And then that will give you your S3 sync folder. Make sure you put this somewhere where it'll be useful because you need to run the Ruby script and reference your target directory. So kind of keep it in your home directory is where I, I would like to So you don't it. want to be backing it. You don't yeah. want to don't be wanna... backing up the script yeah, is exactly. what you're saying. If, yeah, you don't if your target directory is slash www, you don't want to put your script in slash www. Yeah, also don't like back up your slash because you'll be sending your entire hard drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, been there, yeah, done that. Ben and Etsy and Lib and VAR. Like, what, what is going on? <laughs> it's been syncing for three hours. Oh. All right, cool. Let's, let's get into it. All right. So, so then once that's done, all you're going to do is you're going to CD into what just untarred list all the directories. Now what you need to do is rename, so... MV. MV, thank you. Um, not RM. Like not the previous RM. One. Uh, config yml.example, mm -hmm. just drop the dot example. Right. 
So then what you're going to do... It's nice that they provide you with an example script they do. there. Well, just... but that's not so much an example script. That's the config for S3 sync. Okay, cool. So you've got that renamed? Yep, and then what you need to do is S3 config dot y Really? Vim? Nano. Everything else is far not as superior. Okay, all right. Anyway, as you can see, I've already populated the access key and the secure key, which I got from my account manager under the S3. So you, so you sign up for an Amazon yep. S3 account, yep. and then that's going to be your account settings page where you've got all your credentials. Yeah, it's your, account, it's your security credentials. Okay. So you have your access key, and then you have your security key. Click show. It's right there. Don't give these out to your friends and family. This is like your safe word. Or put them on a podcast. Or put them on a podcast. So this, this right here, yeah, totally don't give that out to the world. Okay, great. We'll keep that in mind. Anyway, if you do, you can always inactivate the key. But anyway. So. Once that's done, mm -hmm. we need to come in to the S3 control manager, or excuse me, the A Amazon Web Services Management Console, AWS Engineers Manager. wrote it. Yes. And then once you're in the Amazon uh, Management Console, you're under S3 tab. Not Elastic Beanstalk, not EC2, not VPC. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them there. But we're looking for S3. We're going to create a bucket. The bucket is going I to... I has a bucket. Yes, you has a bucket. There's a blue bucket. Have you seen my blue bucket? Anyway. Yeah. Paul knows what I'm talking about. I, I don't think I do. <laughs> so anyway, then you're gonna name the bucket, whatever you want to name it. If you name it something ridiculous, you're gonna have to type that something ridiculous in a lot. So I wouldn't do that. Okay. And then region, whatever region or the country you're in, there's different pricing for all the regions. Um, US standard is pretty much the easy one. Um, I think North Carolina may be cheaper. Don't quote me on that. Or you can put all your data in Singapore, Tokyo, or Ireland. Oh, nice. Yes. Uh, and then all you do is hit create. That bucket is created, it is also case sensitive. Also, don't make it something ridiculously easy because if you accidentally make your public files public, it's s3.amazon.com slash the name of your bucket. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so don't make it temp. Yes. Or temp three. Well you got it's gotta be available because all of Amazon. Okay. But my point Sorry. is if you name it something. So what you're saying is some other idiot already took temp. Yeah, somebody <laughs> must have already taken temp. <laughs> And uh, anyway, once the bucket's created... That's a fun created, hacking segment waiting to happen. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Well, brute forcer script. I write that in Python in like 10 lines. And this week of Hack 5 <laughs> no, is brought to you No, come on, come on, come <laughs> on. Um, all right, once you've got your, your config done, just go ahead and quit that. And now let's create the place where you're going to stick the files so that they can be synced. Because what you want to do is you want to tar them all up Put them in one place, and then once they're in one place, you can move that one place to the cloud. Okay. As opposed to having to fish everything and do multiple pushes. How do we do that? Yes. All you're going to do is make dir s3 backup, and once it's made, it's right there. Uh, it's going to be mm -hmm. uh, in your same folder as s3 sync. Now, what we need to do is create the s3 backup script. Okay. So dot sh s3 backup dot sh and all we're going to need to do is there's there's several different schools of thought of how to do this pretty much what you need to do is anything you want to copy to the cloud move to the s3 backup folder anything you don't want to move to the cloud don't have it in the s3 backup folder nice okay so it's got like a watch folder where anything that pops in there it's automatically just going to move it up to the cloud no oh it's an s3 backup folder you can run it on a cron job oh okay there yes. you go all right. Run on a cron job. It's not that sophisticated. It's gotcha. just a Ruby script. Okay. Um, but when you run the Ruby script, it does the, the yes. it just sends the. Well, contents. it's right here. So the Ruby script to run it is Ruby S3 sync.rb tack r for recursive, and then S3 backup, that's the name of our folder, sure. and then bucket, which I need to define. Oh, so in the script, you just say bucket equals, and then. Uh, it's backup. In this case, in our case, it's backup underscore. Hack five, and then what I did here, because I made this a daily script, just colon, and then whatever you want the folder in your bucket to be. So you don't actually need the colon anything. Oh, okay. So just like if you were to like SCP something to another server, and then you know, yes. you'd like colon slash whatever. No, no, not so much. This is this is more has to do with bucket management. Okay. So instead so of so you just can have multiple buckets inside your bucket. Or multiple folders. I would call it a folder as opposed to a bucket because right. then it gets confusing. Because yeah. then you have buckets and folders. What folders in a bucket? And folders in buckets. Right. Buckets have folders. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. So then, anyway, once that's done, basically you can put anything you want. So whether you're you're dumping an SQL, if you're dumping a SQL into a tar, or you're you're zipping up an entire HT access file, 
whatever you want to do, you pop it in here. Make sure you just move it to the S3 backup and have it run. And then all you do with So once you run the script, it just starts uploading it? Like, It'll, so anything that we put in here, we can just. OK. We'll move, move. Um, let's find something real quick. Well, check tilde. Like LS tilde. Well, I was just going to move the S3 sync file. Oh, there we go. File. Yeah, yeah. Do that. We'll synchronize our synchronization yes. scripts with synchronization. Sure. I'll go with that. And now what we do is just run the script. So anyway, that's it. You run it, it works, it's up in the cloud, and you can drop it in the cron, slash ec, or hextc -E slash cron.daily. Drop that script in there. Cron tab makes Whatever. it easy. Cron yeah. tab. That's a whole other hack tip waiting to happen. But yeah, yeah. dude, that's, that's epic. Thank you yes. so much. Because we're using this to back up our Yes, our own we site. actually use this on a daily basis. And you've been basis. using this for like, what now, a year now or something? Uh, close almost. to it. Yeah, yeah it's almost. good stuff, it's, man. It's I gotta very say. strong, very solid. And it saved us on more than one occasion. It's nice to have that kind of peace of mind. So definitely, if you're looking for some sort of backup in a script, thank you, Jason, so much for coming by and schooling us on it. Absolutely. It's good stuff. Now, we're going to be back in just a bit with more goodness. Actually, no, there's goodness right now because it's time to check in with Shannon about the hack tip. I just remembered that's what's next. Hack tip. We got asked a million times over if we'd demonstrate an ARP cache poisoning attack for Windows. And while we covered this way back in Season 1, I figured it's worth a refresher. Now, there are a million ways to do this in the command line with Linux tools, but here in Windows, we'll be using a very simple tool called kenenable. Once you've downloaded and installed it from oxid.it, go ahead and fire up the sniffer by flicking the chip icon in the top left. Right there. The first time you do this, you'll be asked to select your interface, and you can get back to the screen anytime by clicking configure. I've gone ahead and selected my interface with my IP address since it's my wireless network card. Now I can scan the network for potential targets. So you go over to the sniffer tab, right there, right click and select scan MAC addresses. I'll stick with the default all hosts in my subnet and then I click OK. So I have this huge list right here. Wow, we have a lot of stuff. Darren, you got a lot of stuff on your, uh, your wireless card going on right here. I hope you know about all that stuff right there. OK, cool. Now that I have a list of all the machines on the network, I can go over to the ARP tab and start the actual ARP cache poisoning attack. So I'm going to go through here and I'm pretty sure 10.13.13 or 37.124 is Darren. Right, Darren? Yep. All right, so I'm going to choose his and uh, do a little bit of a poisoning attack on him. <laughs> so I'll click my plus sign. So you click the blue plus icon on the toolbar to bring up the routing dialog. And here I'm going to select 10.13.37.1 on the left. That one is always the router. And then 10.13.37.124 on the right, because that one's Darren's machine. Let's see if I can find it right here. One, two, there it is. And then click OK. And the route will be loaded. So now I can begin the poisoning attack by clicking on the radiation icon on the left, right there. So it's poisoning. Immediately our poisoning attack begins. Yes, now you can sit back, relax, and wait for your target to do some browsing, which it looks like Darren's already doing some browsing. <laughs> All right. Once enough traffic has gone through, you'll notice full routing below, which means that you're getting a lot of good information going right there. So what does all of this stuff mean? ARP cache poisoning attacks basically mean a technique used to attack a wired or a wireless network in a connection. The attacker can sniff data and send a spoofed ARP message over to the LAN. So when they send that spoof message, they receive data that was intended for the router or the computer in question. It's a man in the middle attack. Neither machine knows that I exist in the middle. They just think that they're sending data like usual. usual. So, what tools are tickling your technolust? <laughs> Send them over to tips at hack5.org and we'll share them with the world. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsor. <laughs> if you provide technical support to clients, colleagues, friends or family, have you found an easy, cost-effective way without being there in person? Well, the best way for me to provide technical support is to do it online with GoToAssist Express. 
GoTo Assist Express lets you view and control another person's computer so you can quickly resolve technical issues. Now, I've been able to use it to help friends learn new software or fix family computer problems without being there in person. Yeah, that's, that's worth its weight in gold. So try GoTo Assist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, you have to go to gotoassist.com slash HAK5. That just about wraps up this episode of Hack 5, but you guys know before we get going, we've got your technology photo of the week and some meat with Shannon stuff eating the wireless cards. I know you're hungry. I am you're so hungry! Emails. emails. Maybe those will whet your appetite or something. You'll <laughs> satiate it. <laughs> DT emails. wrote in, is there a cheap substitute for an ARP cap, maybe a firmware flash on a certain Wi-Fi card, or something to run software aside to work with the Wi-Fi card, or virtual appliance? Anything? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So, is there uh, a substitute? They actually sell uh, a Wi-Fi card for this, and it's really expensive. Uh, here's the thing. Yeah, like 200 bucks. Yeah, something like that. Eh. And basically, if you're willing to use some Linux tools, which I find to be better anyway, you can get away with a lot more uh, cards. There's plenty of compatibility, whether you're looking for older like PC, MCIA, or looking for like you know your uh, PCIe or little mini PCIs and stuff like that, or even USB adapters. Uh, probably the best resource if you're looking to buy a new one rather than just find out if your current one supports it is to go over to aircrackng.org. I'm going to have links in the show notes to their compatibility list where they show. And, you know, based on my experience, I'm going to go ahead and recommend Atheros wholeheartedly. I've had no problems whatsoever with like their Atheros. line. They've got a good USB chip. If you can find a, a USB card like this that runs the Atheros AR9170 chipset, you shouldn't have any problems. There's a bunch of other chipsets you should check out. Cool. Huge compatibility list, so yeah. Thank you, Jared. I like the Alpha as well. The Alpha is good. That's a real tech. And we got a second email from Daniel. He just asks, what type of cameras do we use for the show? What model? Thanks in advance. Great job on I the show. Have, I should have looked that up beforehand. Uh, off the top of my head, I think it's a... Panties. Panasonic HMC 150. Okay. Is our, is our big center one right here. And, and Paul is guy, taking a look to make sure. Those are <laughs> AG HMC 90s? I want to say, yeah, 90s and 150s. Anyway, they're they're pretty inexpensive uh, HD cameras, and they're rocking pretty well. We've been, yeah, I like them. I, I love like our cameras. Line. It's good stuff. But they're kind of heavy. Yeah, <laughs> it really, it doesn't matter what you shoot on because we started shooting this show on a freaking Sony <laughs> handy cam, like itsy bitsy thing with a tape deck, and oh, it's, right, uh, right. It doesn't matter. Cameras don't <laughs> matter. You know, it's it's what you put on them. And now for our Technoless photo of the week. We got a cool one this week. Yeah. Kyle, he wrote in, he wanted to show us his laser engraved tavern sign, rocking Dude. the Hack 5 logo, of course. I love that. That is really cool. We should do some <laughs> laser engraving stuff here on Hack 5. We I should. Think we might be able to real soon. That would be um, awesome. Isn't yeah. there one? Maybe? Mm -hmm. There might be one upstairs. Yep, something like that. Hence the board. Yes. And remember, you guys can support your show for free. It's really easy. Just subscribe on iTunes, on YouTube, on Miro, whatever your platform of choice is. Get your Technolos delivered to you weekly. No, you know, no fussing around with downloads. It's just boom, it's right there. It helps us. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you. And you can also express your support by going and getting some Hack 5 goodies. Oh, yeah. Because who doesn't want to walk down the street with a Hack 5 shirt on? Yes. I mean, yes, we should all be. It is awesome. So check out our brand new storefront over at hackshop, H-A-K-shop.com or hack5.org slash store like it has always been. Yay! I love the new storefront. It's so much fun. Me too. Uh, also, a quick little reminder again, August 2nd, or sorry, April 2nd, they both start with a uh, April 2nd, party yes. here in the Bay Area. <laughs> you're going to find all the details if you're a friend of ours on Facebook or you follow us on Twitter or if you're just going over to hack5.org, you'll find all the details. We hope you guys will come out. It's going to be a huge bash with Nerdcore fun. Nerdcore rapping! everybody from Hack5. I am so out. stoked! It's so much fun. Yes. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. To. All right. Until next week. I'm Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. Remember to trust your technolust. What? <gasps> yeah! I love bubbles. Oh, not on the laptop, though. No, stay away. That's just about That is what it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
You know, we got a couple of emails from you guys. Okay, track your. Not only do we have your trusty technicals for every week, I eat USB connectors. Gnarly! Yeah!